Good morning everybody. It is a gusty windy day here in Oklahoma. We're supposed to get like 40 mile per hour gust. Um, it's coming. Anyways, today we got to do a few things. Um, hopefully tomorrow, this is one thing we're doing today we're going to prep for tomorrow is we finally got someone lined up to come put the roof on the rock cabin. So today we got to go fire up the old beast. That thing ain't been fired up in about a month and a half since we picked up the roofing supplies and they're actually sitting in the bed of the truck. So one thing we got to do is ensure that thing will start up. It's been sitting here in the cold and all that. You know how batteries and all that stuff get. That's the last thing we need is that thing not to run to be able to get the materials down to the rock building. I'm not too worried about that. That old beast is a 1990 Chevy with the 350 5.7 liter engine in it. It's pretty durable. Um, it's only got like 90 some thousand miles on it. Even though it's old, it hasn't been used a lot. But first, we got to address an issue on the farm. The animals always come first, as you know. And one thing that Rachel and I have noticed since we've built these new hay feeders for our goats is the goats have a little bit of a harder time getting to the hay and um, what I'm saying is they, they can eat it just fine but once they eat the outside parts of the hay and the hay is right in the center of those racks um, the shorter goats, the picos over here aren't quite as tall as the kikos and the Spanish they're fine with their hay feeder but the picos they're having a little hard time getting to the center of the hay bale once the outside of it is eaten off and when i put that thing in there i kind of centered it instead of putting it on one side or the other so i'm gonna I'm, i gotta put the uh hay spear on the kubota m59 the big tractor and then we'll grab a new hay bale and we'll take in there and just set it on the ground and then um while we're in there we'll go ahead and take the hay spear and then fix the other hay bale now I'm by myself today and let me turn this camera around it's gonna be tricky because we don't just have hangry goats to get through the fence or the gate now we got to deal with emus geese and turkeys well the turkeys come and go out anyways but we don't want the emus or the geese or the goats to get out and you can see they see me and they're waiting so uh, I don't know. Um, I wasn't planning on feeding just yet, but I think we might just go ahead and have to because the last thing I want to do is be chasing goats on this cold, windy day. So let me grab the keys, go get the uh, hay spear, put on the tractor, and then we'll head over there. And then we'll check out the beast. Okay, so we're at the Pico pen and we got the first bell of hay. I've got a bucket of feed right here that we're going to use to distract all these hangry goats and other animals. But our friend Patricia sent us this here, and you guys know we never leave the netting on here, the net wrap that protects the hay, because goats will get tangled up in it, they'll try to eat everything else. Well, Patricia sent us this. This is awesome. Um, I haven't tried this yet. It's, the wind's about to blow over the camera, so I've got a little dinky tripod out here. Let me do something here. Set this feed bucket. There we go. Maybe that'll work. Set the feed bucket up on the uh, tripod. You know, there's old Mojo. I don't know if you guys can see him or not. But anyways, this thing has razor blades right here that are replaceable. <coughs> it also has this hook here so you can grab that net and just rip it right off. So let's give it a try. This should make things a lot easier. Can you get it all, Mo? Might be a few in there. There you go. Pretty easy. <laughs> I'll reach up here. Cool. So yeah, that's a time saver. Usually I just use my pocket knife, but this thing's handy. Thank you, Patricia, for sending this to us. This will come in good use here for sure. Now let's see if we can get in the uh go pin. You think they'll let him send Mo? Huh? Oh boy. I don't know if they will or not. Alright, birds, we're gonna feed you a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, you can see how I kind of scooted over the top belly. The top part of the hay is over here where they can actually reach it now. And I still need to get my fork and kind of pick up that one without that one falling off. So I didn't need to do it. But all I needed to do, I'll just have to come back and do it again so I don't fix it now. Okay, that's about as good as I can get it for right now. Once they eat all this top part off, this will be easy enough to kind of take by hand since this stuff is in layers. You can see how it kind of unrolls in layers. Once they get all this heavy stuff off that's towards the side, I can just kind of rake it over with by hand and you got these nice big flakes, you can just put it right on the side. So this side's good to go. Let's go grab a bell for the Kikos in Spanish. But first, Mojo is waiting patiently. And I was trying to hurry up, I didn't even bring his food. So let's go grab him some food and make him happy. Oh, 
that makes that makes me feel so bad. He was sitting there waiting. He must be ready for dinner. So uh, I hate when I do that, but when I'm in a rush and trying to feed the hay and stuff, I usually wait and feed the dogs last. But I guess I need to start doing different because he was in routine and he said, Dad, I'm ready for dinner. Look at him sitting there all patiently. You poor boy. I'm sorry, Mo. Yeah, he's a good boy. He said, okay, Dad, enough camera time. You said animals come first. I know it. I'm sorry, Momo. I'm in trouble, ain't I? I'm in trouble, ain't I? I got you. Got you some eggs. Got some eggs. Huh? Got some fresh eggs. Uh-oh, you got competition. Get out of here, Yoshi. This is Momo's food. I ain't gonna let nobody get my food, I promise. Here you go, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. You get lots of head scratches now. Because I feel bad. You happy now? Alright, so I set that other hay bale as you guys see. <laughs> Your neck's trying to eat the egg. Chill. The other hay bale is next to the other one. So now they can eat on that or they can eat the uh, hay bale that I scooted over. Good boy, Mo. Thank you for being patient, buddy. You're the best dog. All right, let's pick up our trash. And then go feed the other goats of hay bale. And the dogs. Can't forget the dogs. The dogs are just as vital as anything on the farm. Without the dogs, we don't have livestock. Um, you guys see, I say this all the time. If you're new to the channel, we live in the foothills of the Ozark Mountains. There's a lot of haulers and valleys and you know a lot of uh structure and stuff for dens for like predators like bobcats and coyotes and they just thrive around here with all the wildlife so trying to raise goats or chickens or anything around here without a livestock gardening dog does not work out very well and we have uh found out the hard way when we first started we didn't have livestock gardening dogs and our livestock was uh continually being attacked so not good all right let me go grab another bell of hay grab some dog food and goat food we'll try to get a bell in there without the dogs getting out ready to eat huh? you guys ready to eat come on we're mojo out of the way a little bit here goats you guys get your own. Come on, goats. Come on. Come on, goats. There they come.
Now, if we can get anyone to the dog's bothering him. I think we're good. Okay, you guys just keep eating. Oh, Cora is the messiest dog I've ever had in her jungle. Thank you. Okay, that one went pretty pretty well. So the goats will be happy. You see they're starting to uh, get done eating their grain. They're starting to kind of work their way over to the hay bale. Little Taylor Swift, she's already found it. And they've already got, <clears throat> they still got over a half a hay bale in their hay rack, but you know, it's December. It's starting to get a lot colder. Um, you know, we get start getting nastier weather and we have the extra hay bales this year. So why not feed? You know, we can set out another one. Setting them on the ground, they are gonna waste a little bit more, but we got some older goats like Tawny, the old tan colored goat. And you know, I want it easy for her to be able to eat the hay and all that too. Not have to climb up on that, that hay cradle rack thing, feeder, whatever you wanna call it and have to eat. So putting one on the ground like that, she can eat it. They will waste a little bit, but we got the extra this year, so. Okay, so here is the roofing material. Like I told you guys, it is on the truck and ready to go. We just gotta get it down to the lake. The question is, will the obese start up? It's been sitting for a month and a half at least. Make sure there's no mice in here. Usually there's wasp in here, but you don't have to worry about this time of year or the snakes. All right, here goes nothing. I don't want to work on a vehicle today, so. There you go. The old beast rarely lets me down. So I want this thing warm up for a second, pull it over by the shop, and I got to start loading all the tools and stuff like that in it. I guess I won't be taking the blue truck. We'll just take this one probably, so. All right, the beast made it to the shop. I just gotta start loading it up and I uh, got the hay bales out, so that's good. Got all that done. I already got the feeding done. The dogs are happy. The goats are happy. They got extra food. We're supposed to get like three inches of rain the next couple of days, so hopefully we can get this roof on tomorrow and then be done pretty much with the cabin build, except, uh, I mean, as far as being dried in, um, I still gotta put that piece of plexiglass up there on that south window too. So. You guys are probably wondering um, if we're still sick. Well, obviously, you guys can probably tell I am talking a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, we are probably about 90% uh, better now. My stomach's been hurting a little bit, but uh, I feel I feel a lot better. Got my energy back. Got my oxygen back. I can talk. I can work. I can do things. So uh, thank you guys for everyone that said a prayer for us. Rachel and I and the kids appreciate that. Um, uh, this flu was pretty rough this go around, but uh, I'm better. I'm just blessed. I'm I'm healed and able to get back out here and take care of the animals. And you know, there's no uh, sick days when you own a farm. That's for sure. 
So guys, anyways, tomorrow, um, the next, hopefully tomorrow, we're gonna try to get this roof put on the rock cabin. And if you guys have been following that journey and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel and clicking that notification bell down below and that will tell you when we upload a new video to our YouTube channel. And uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you so much. We love you. Stay tuned. Hopefully the goats uh, don't eat this hay bale in a day or two. They do like wasting these hay bales that are on the ground. I promise you that. But we are blessed to have enough extra this year. It's not a big deal. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you then.